amazing. It's amazing. The Michael Deacon program. 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 Is he embassy? Is he embassy? Is he embassy? Is he embassy? And what time is it exactly for those uh, out there listening to us? It is now half past nine on Saturday morning. Oh, my. At Lake, Australia. That's where I am. My goodness. And have you always lived in Australia, by the way? Uh, well, I, well, I did live in America for 10 years in the 1990s. But, uh, yeah, born and born and raised in Australia. I'm an Australian boy. Yep. So, but uh, I've done a lot of traveling. I've been around the world a few times, you know. Absolutely, yes. And do you ever miss being in America? Oh, that's an interesting question. Um, yeah, well, you know what? Um, yeah, look, I probably do. I miss all the activities you've got going on there. I mean, like you've got lectures and workshops and and seminars, and there's, it, it's so active and buzzing. There's uh, there's always something happening. And uh, uh, in lazy old Australia, we don't have any of those fancy things. You guys don't have a. Uh, you guys don't have any conferences or anything of that nature out there. We have them, of course, but not like America does. America is the conference capital of the world. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, and uh, most people already are quite familiar with you, David. And you know, I've been listening right. to you on the AM dial for many, many moons now, and. What exactly inspired you to explore the concept of a reverse speech? Oh dear, that's that was uh, uh, that was a combination of things. I started back in '84, just running records backwards, not really hearing much, and uh, I, I I I really got started in '87. Was oh no, sorry, '84. What am I talking about? Uh, yeah, I was running a half a house for street kids, and uh, there was an American evangelist uh, traveling through, and he was preaching that rock and roll was the devil's music, and if you play records backwards, you could hear all these satanic messages. So uh, I kind of thought, well, this is a bit weird. Um, but I went home. I'm an electronics buff. I'm a ham radio operator. I've been in electronics and audio all my life. And, uh, and I rewired some equipment to play these takes backwards, and Lo and behold, I heard the phrases that they claim were there, which I was really quite stunned at. And um, I, I started full-time research in 87, it was really just a casual hobby from 84 to 87. But in 87, I just really wanted to find out what, what was all this backward stuff. Um, the fundamentals claim it was satanic, but I'd found lots of examples in music that weren't satanic, that were just about normal everyday topics and uh, and um, then in 87 I accidentally quite by accident actually stumbled across an normal human speech and uh, it's one thing to hear it in music it's a bit of an interesting twist but to suddenly hear backward messages in speech that are communicating what people are thinking at the time is really quite freaky uh, so once I started finding messages in speech I was hooked you know, I was just, and uh, I've been, it's been, and I'm hooked now 40 years later. It's a passion of mine that I'm just driven with the vengeance to pursue. So, yeah. Right, and yes, this all started, I would imagine this got really hot and heavy for you during the whole satanic panic era. Oh, yes, it did. <laughs> oh, yeah. It a lot really of parents. Did. <laughs> so? I said a lot of angry parents out there. Yeah, there were a lot of angry parents out there. They were burning records in the street and everything. It was really, it was really quite a, uh, quite a, uh, a traumatic time back then. So, 
they were they were claiming rock and roll was the devil's music and Satan was manipulating the singers to put messages in that would get people to take drugs and engage in illicit sex and, <laughs> and so it was all a bit of a paranoia unfortunately i i have to agree with you and it makes hell sound a lot better than being in heaven i mean you have all these these great musicians in hell it makes you almost want to be in hell to be honest <laughs> Uh, yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would imagine what kind of music does heaven have if rock and roll is exclusively for those in hell? Yeah, well, whatever. <laughs> if you believe that, that's fine. <laughs> but, look, I, look, and uh, to be frank, my whole career, I've tried to divorce myself from the satanic uh, hysteria, yeah. you know, because, uh, you know, I'm saying, look, this is there's no satanic about this. It's a natural function of language. We're all doing it. So, I so. agree. And and by the way, David, I'll, I'll cut this part out, but uh, I, I think you're coming in just a tiny bit, a little hot there. Oh, okay. Here, yeah, I'll turn my mic back. How's that? Is that better? A little bit lower. A little bit more. Yep. Yeah, okay. All right. That's oh, way down. Now. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Luckily, I'm on a digital console here, so it's going to make you sound even better, which is awesome. But yes, now you sound great. I could hear you a lot more clear now. Oh, excellent. Okay, good. But yeah, let, good. let's carry on here. Um, but again, essentially, what exactly prompted you to even want to play anything backwards, essentially? <laughs> oh, dear. That's a story I don't tell people very often. That's my hidden secret. Oh, no. Uh, I'll tell you the story. Yeah, yeah it was yeah. my birthday. I was... Um, it was uh, it was October 30th, 1983, and I was getting ready to go out partying for my birthday and I was listening to music to a Walkman strapped to my belt and the Walkman fell out of my belt and straight into the toilet bowl and um, so I pulled the thing out didn't work I pulled it apart to dry it out and somehow I put the thing back together wrong and it only played backwards so uh, by a pure coincidence I had this backwards playing Walkman and um, I hitchhiked I I was living in America at the time, and yeah. I was, and I travelled back home to Australia. This was in '83, and I hitchhiked through Europe listening to Michael Jackson and Pink Floyd backwards on my backwards playing Walkman. So that's what got me into it. It was, it was a, it was a mistake, an accident. Call it synchronicity. I don't know. Call it what you like. But I had this what wound that only played backwards, so I started listening to Taste Backwards, and that's the true story. Wow. Yeah. I've never heard yeah. that before. Yeah, you've never revealed that anywhere before, I must uh, no, say. No, I'm a little bit embarrassed about it. I don't talk about it much. <laughs> yeah, but that's very interesting. So Pink Floyd and Michael Jackson, and did you find any uh, very, well, I would have to imagine some quite interesting things there. Uh, uh, yes, I did. Yes, I did. Pink Floyd got some amazing reversals, and uh, uh, Michael Jackson, of course, and his uh, that was his Thriller album, I believe. That I was li li listening to. Mm -hmm. They came out in uh, eighty two, eighty three, somewhere, somewhere, somewhere around then. So, so yeah, so so that's how I got started, and I just oh, I started listening to music to music backwards, and. Uh, Accidentally stumbled across it in human speech, and the rest is history. You yeah, know? you made a whole career out of it. Yeah, I have. Yeah, I have. Which yeah. is awesome. Uh, yeah. Well, so I remember some people telling me back in the eighties said, uh, "Well, how are you going to support yourself, David?" I thought, oh, "I don't know. I'll work it out." So I, uh, I started doing session work with with people. Is what I did. I, oh. I contracted out my services, and people would come to me. I'd and I record them and analyze their re reversals and uh, and I I I, uh, I I soon built a very successful business yes, sir. which I still have to this day absolutely so, and the universe will provide as they say that's true yeah, my I agree goodness with that. and um, you know speaking of Pink Floyd and Michael Jackson I mean you have obviously seen what happened with both of their careers over time and any of your findings, did it indicate anything of that nature ever happening to these people? Oh, uh, probably Michael Jackson. He had some pretty dark reversals. Um, 
I don't know whether I can pull any up on here with the top of my head. I don't think I've got Michael Jackson handy. Let me let me have a look at my uh, yeah, go ahead. Files. We'll see what I got from Michael Jackson. Yeah, he had some. Here's the dark reversals. Pink Floyd were pretty benign, but they're you know, but they're but they still perform every every now and then. Do yeah, they, they, they still do. But you know, I think uh, Gilmore not very happy with uh, Roger Waters last time. Last time I heard. Oh, okay. Yeah, they they're fine. Yeah, yeah, here's a verse, a funny one on Michael Jackson. See if you can see if the level's okay on here. Okay. And he says, Superman is a dick. Whoa. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> oh, that's a bit of a bit of a strange one. But anyway, that's the one I had on him. Yeah, no worries. I appreciate that. I, again, I don't think anyone's ever... I really asked you about uh, Pink Floyd or Michael Jackson uh, throughout all no, this time. No, no, I uh, normally talk about music. Um, I've got some other one on Michael Jackson. Uh, and by the way, just uh, I'm head. curious to ask you this: um, yeah. family and friends, did did they ever think, oh, what the hell is this reverse speech crap about? Yes. Oh, so you did <laughs> yes. get that? <laughs> yeah, my parents were very worried about me. Oh no. <laughs> <in the early laughs> <days. laughs> <laughs> running tapes backwards and uh um you know well my dad's a minister yes church, did, right? did he so, think uh, did, did he think you were going to the dark side when you're doing this yes they oh, were no. a little bit concerned about me back in the early days yes they were indeed but my parents came around okay they actually came around after you know watching my career for many years and see me work with clients and that's what brought my parents around with my client work and uh, the success I was having with working with people so uh, my parents are still mm-hmm. alive they're in their okay. mid 90s now but oh my great support for me yeah. damn so they're still alive and kicking that's great so they yes. were they were able to see how everything came to fruition for you so I'm sure they're quite yes. proud of you oh yeah yeah oh, yeah I they are that. indeed yeah yeah still alive both in their mid 90s oh you know? my uh, does that give you hope for living a long uh, long life, oh, David. It absolutely does. I tend to, I tend to reach a hundred. I do. I've got too much work to do. I and know you, you got plenty of work to do, no doubt. And you know, another thing I don't think I've ever heard you ever talk about in, in an interview is electronic voice phenomenon. Uh, oh. What exactly are your thoughts on EVPs? I'm very curious. I actually quite believe in EVP. I've got quite a few stunning examples that I've oh, wow. uh, that I've uh, collected over the years um, um, it's a similar phenomenon to, well I don't know whether it's similar to reverse speech or not um, it's it's a spiritual type language um, uh, look for those who don't know EVPs recordings on uh, that suddenly appear on tape recordings for no reason voices um, uh, you know, some EVP proponents go to graveyards believe they're getting the voice of ghosts um, uh, look, it's a very valid and real phenomenon. I've heard EVPs throughout my career, often actually, uh, in, 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 in tapes that I've been doing. And so you uh, believe in the afterlife, in other words? Oh, yeah, of course I do. Yes, yes, I do believe in the afterlife. Yes, I do. Yes, yes, strongly. So, so you would say you're still obviously somewhat religious. <sighs> Oh, yes, I probably am. Yes, I would have to say yes to that question. Yes. yes I mean, I don't talk about it much in, sure, uh, in it's my okay. work. Yeah. You know? uh, it's, uh, but it's uh, privately, sure. Right. Yeah, okay. I've, I've always wondered about that. I, I'm, I always had a feeling, of course, because of your father, then you probably must have been somewhat religious yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was a youth pastor in my That's early right. 20s. Yeah. So, uh, so, uh, you know, my beliefs are still very strong. Um, I have some rather unconventional beliefs. Sure. <laughs> nowadays. Yeah, right. You know? Who doesn't? Uh, uh, but yeah, but true. so you were, you worked at like a halfway home, I believe, right? A halfway house sort uh-huh. of ordeal as a youth pastor. And what made you decide to sort of uh, get away from all that, David? Oh, reverse speech took me away okay. from it. Okay. Yeah. I, I just, yeah, in 87, reverse speech came my full time career. And, um, never looked uh, back. Yes. Sorry? Yeah, you, you never looked back after that. Never looked back. No, never did. But my early career, yeah, I was involved. I, you know, I, I worked for Christian coffee shops and halfway houses. And, uh, I, 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 I set up and established a re- rehab house in my how old was i when i did that uh 
late twenties, early thirties, and uh, yeah, worked with street kids and drug addicts and alcoholics, and uh, um, uh, yeah, yes, th- 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 that's been my early career. Nice. And have any of these kids ever reached out to you later, later down the road? Oh, what an interesting question. No, I don't think I've heard from any of them at all. Oh no, no. not not at all. No. Interesting. And over no, the years. Well, look, uh-huh. we- yeah, look, I moved to America, and I lived in America for 10 years, and I lost a lot of my a lot of, yeah. in those 10 years I was away. So. Understood. I mean, sometimes they come back, though, and, you know, they'll find you, yeah, and they'll they say, hey, David, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Okay, well, you know, the life goes on, you know. It happens. That's true. Hopefully, yeah, they're all doing good, though. I hope they are. You know, I, I did a lot of the good back then. I'm proud of some of the work I did, you know. Absolutely. And, uh, and, uh, and you know, and in one sense, I'm still doing the same thing, but working with, with my clients. I mean, I have a very active, busy therapeutic practice, you know, and, uh, where I use reverse speech and uh, healing all sorts of problems, actually. Understood. And can you uh, tell us a little bit about your current clients? Not Not anything too revealing, but... What exactly specifically are some of these people coming out to you about? Oh, variety of issues, really. Oh, wow. Um, uh, I got one lady who's been working with me for many years now who uh, suffers from uh, chronic migraines. Um, mm-hmm. We're working through that. We're starting to get a handle on it. Uh, migraines seem to be reducing finally. So that's one lady. Um, gee whiz, I've worked with a just finished working with a man who was a pedophile, actually. Oh, no. And he came to me for session work to uh, not offend anymore. Oh, so, okay. But that was that was a fascinating case. I worked with him for, for several months and uh, fast, fascinating case. Um, I got another lady uh, with cancer. Um, cancer is a bit difficult to get a high handle on, really. It's, it's a horrible disease. Um, um, uh, I'm not too sure how we're going with her right now. Um, she's still alive. She was only given a few months to live, so that's uh, so that's encouraging. Um, gee whiz! Uh, hang on, let's have a look at my uh, look at my appointment list. And pull out some of my clients. Yeah, but in other words, you have all kinds of uh, people with all sorts of different issues. Then. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I got one lady who suffered from anxiety. Um, and uh, she's working on that to uh, work with her anxiety. I got another man who's on a spiritual journey in uh-huh. life, and he uses reverse speech to monitor his state of his spiritual journey. Um, yeah, um, so many different issues and clients I work with. Yeah, yeah you really do. Yeah. And another client who's mm-hmm. autistic, and uh, we're working with that to reduce the symptoms of his autism. So, uh, look, I, 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 ha- I have a wide cross section of issues I work with. Absolutely, and, uh, and I have very good success too. Great success. Reverse speech is uh, it enables us to get right down to the unconscious and to see the actual unconscious reasons that certain issues are running. And many times, and which I love about it, many times it can give us solutions for uh, for how to work with issues. So. Uh, like, um, let me uh, pull up one of my client examples here. Uh, you almost sound you almost sound like a Jungian. <laughs> I've been compared to uh, th- the reverse speech has been compared to Jungian work. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 it's very much into the metaphors and archetypes. Yeah, here's a woman who came to me with money problems with uh-huh. a surprising solution. Listen to this forward. Here we go. She and I need to work this issue out, but I it started to bring up all my money fears and stuff. And the thing is, is I'm, if I know I start sourcing fear again, I'm going to go way down hell. The back was, she says, work on my grief. Work on my grief. Ah, yeah, I hear that. You hear that? I hear that clearly. Yeah, very clear. So this is her unconscious telling me that in order to work with her money issues, we've got to handle grief. Now, who would have thought that grief has got anything to do with money issues? And so, but Reverse Sweeps was able to give me that in just one recording. 
And it goes back to, you know, and, and sort of that opened up a whole avenue of therapeutic questioning. It goes back to, uh, go back to her father, who's a very wealthy man who, who, uh, who ignored his daughter growing up. And so there's grief associated with loss of father figure and uh, that affected her finances. So reverse speech, able to point that and uh, uh, narrow that down. Um, yeah, let me put another one uh, from yeah. therapy. Uh, where's the one I'm looking for? Uh, I got, uh, hang on. Mm -hmm. uh, no worries. So I have literally got hundreds of thousands of reversals in my files. Okay, here's a woman who came to me with relationship problems. Her relationships would, she'd been engaged like five or six times and they kept on break, breaking up. Oh my. So she's talk, talking to me about this. <laughs> the night that it happened, uh, my friend Cheryl was just telling me about, uh, you know, what we believe we then create and it just. Oh, she was saying the night that it happened when I broke up, well, we create. What situation that happened to us? Back was she says, "I've been molested." I've been molested. I've been molested. You hear that? I hear that. I've been molested. So this lady broke down and told me she never told anyone in her whole life that she had been regularly molested by a family member growing up. She felt great shame about it. And I was the first person who she'd ever told. And that was because reversals told me. There was my, no way she was going to tell me. My goodness. Um, and it was able to come out in reverse and uh, led to an amazing healing with this lady. So uh, uh, it, the, the power the reverse speech has to pinpoint issues. And right. to pinpoint the cause of issues is really quite amazing. And David, did she get married again? I don't know, actually. No, I, I worked with her for a couple of rounds, and then she went on her own way, and I haven't heard from her since, so I don't know. My goodness. So, I, I hope not. I mean, uh, you know, I, marriage isn't for everyone, you know? <laughs> Let's Tell be me honest. about it. <laughs> <laughs> I've been married three times. I've oh, been my. single for 30 years now. So. You've been married three times, David. Yeah, I have. You didn't learn yeah. the first time, huh? No, I obviously did. Well, I, I, I learned the third time because I've been single for 30 years now. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, you smartened up. You smartened up. No worries. Yeah. Yes, marriage is a very uh, slippery slope, you know. It certainly can be. Yeah, yes, we're, it can we're very, uh, we're, we're, we're strange and difficult creatures, very complex creatures, I believe. Oh, uh, we certainly are. Yeah, we uh, Many, many, many nooks and crannies that I work with with clients. I'm trying to unravel, unravel issues, you know. So, uh, and here's another one of therapy yes, I sir. just saw. This is mm -hmm. a, a chap who was came to me with temper problems. Uh -huh. Build that up, but it's double tough because I'm traveling abroad. I've chosen to live outside America. Anyway, yep. um, I'm still relying on him to help. Still relying on him. Talk about his father, and he says backwards a crime with our father. You, you hear that one okay? I so, certainly uh, do. I hear these very uh, clearly now. Yeah, well, I know. Look, that's one of the things I tell people. Look, we're not stretching to hear these things. You know, we're not trying to put, make something fit into discombobulated sounds. These are very clear phrases. They, yeah, uh, this one's clear. They just, mm -hmm. just jump out of the gibberish and... Um, Clear as day. Yeah, this one. And cry with our father. He mm -hmm. he inherited his temper issues from his father. Is what we found out. Is what that reversal led us to understand. So, um, so um, yeah, able to able to work with that. Now, once we know a cause, some of the worst problems in working with people is to find out what the cause of the issue is. You know, right. So, and and yeah. David, what are some common misconceptions about reverse speech that maybe you you have addressed in the past? Oh, common misperceptions. Well, the most common one is all of the devil. <laughs> so, uh, so you know, I address that as best as I can. You know, it's a, no, it's not satanic. It's a natural function of language. Uh, yes, they did find satanic reversals on rock and roll artists, but that's because the artists were into the occult anyway. So, right. no surprise. You know, and uh, so that's the common one. The other common one is. Um, Oh, it's it's like para paradoria. You can hear anything uh, you like. Yeah. Any random sounds. Um, look and look and to be frank, that 
accusation is indeed correct, unless you know what you're doing. Some people just run tapes backwards to hear anything they want. You, you've got to know how to find them, um, and that requires a skill. Uh, um, those are the two main ones, pareidolia and satanic messages. Um, look, once if someone gives me the time of day, normally they are pretty much convinced that this is real. I mean, the examples speak for themselves. Right, yeah. Some They're Again, just, these were diaphanously clear, in my opinion, without it being pareidolia in any sort of sense. Right, yeah. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And look, I mean, yeah, let me... Let me play you. Let me play you a couple of clear examples. Sure. See if you can hear them without me telling you. Okay. okay. So uh, this will knock Paradolia on the head. So uh, here's a here's a guy who came to me uh, with money problems. Does it further for us to put more energy and money and effort? Okay, I'm going to play this. Listen carefully. See if you can hear what he's saying. Lean on me. Lean on me. What do you hear? Play that again. Yeah. Lean on me. Lean on me. Something about something about leaning on me. That's right. You're absolutely right. You're frightened. Lean you're, on me. Ah, you're Play frightened. Again. Lean on. Yeah, it was a little hard you're to hear. Yeah, ah, I know. Ah, okay. Lean on you hear me. the fright now? I hear it now. Lean on me. Yeah. Now that's his spirit talking to him, saying, "Look, I know you're upset. I know you're frightened." Don't worry, don't panic, just trust in me. And uh, here's another one that's clear too. Try, try, try this one. It's an amazingly badly written bill. So forwards, it's an amazingly badly written bill. And backwards, what's he saying backwards? Are we bad new? Are we bad new? Are we bad new? What do you hear? It's a little hard to hear on that one. Oh, that's a tough one, isn't it? Okay. That's the real tough. bad bill. Are we bad new? A real bad bill. You hear that one now? A real bad bill. A real bad I bill. I guess that's a bit tougher than normal, that one. Okay, all right. Yeah, but um, I'll often in lectures play play clients, uh, play play example without telling them what they say, and uh, there's normally a pretty good understanding of what the verse will say. Most, most people get it, get it, you know, not 100% accurate, but at least get key words, so, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, again, uh, how has your work been received by, let's say, the scientific community? Have they ripped you to shreds, David? Yes, I have, certainly have. <laughs> oh, I recall, yes, many years back. Yes, they certainly have. Y yes, I've got lots of rolls of toilet paper I can use now. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse my no sardonic worries. humor. Um, yeah, they uh, look, it, it, it's really quite frustrating, actually. Um, um, Monash University in Australia did a test on reverse speech, and um, uh, I, they asked me to send them 10, 10, 10, 10 examples of reversals. Uh, uh, so I did. And they ran their test and said, well, okay, people can hear these. We do agree that uh, you have found valid examples of backward messages, but it's all coincidence. It's all, mm. uh, it's all, uh, it's just uh, it, 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 any speech that you take and play back, you're bound to find some both phrases every now and then. And then Monash in their report basically trashed me because I've got no linguistic qualifications. So, uh, um, look, the frustrating thing is, is that every academic report that has looked at the reverses i found have all agreed that they are there. They've all agreed, yes, we can hear these, but it's purely coincidence is the argument given. And I just don't. I mean, these phrases are occurring once every 10 or 15 seconds of speech. They're occurring in grammatically correct sentences that relate directly to the forward dialogue. I mean, how can that be coincidence? I mean, what are the odds of an intelligent sound coming together on such a regular frequent basis in grammatically correct sentences that are related to the forwards. I mean, I, I'm not a statistician, but I would imagine that would be very, very high odds. I might I have to agree with you on that one. And have there been any recordings that you've done that really just shocked the hell out of you, David? Oh, Anything that just like popped out at you, you know? Um... Oh, I think probably some of the um, uh, some of the serial killers I've worked on mm -hmm. have been really. Some of the reversals are really quite bad. Um, 
here, here is uh, here, here's Scott Peterson, who's uh, was he's currently sitting on uh, in California. He he was found guilty of murdering his wife. Right. Here he is. A reporter says to him, uh, "Did you murder your wife? Did you murder your wife? No, no, uh, I did not." The back was he says, "Neck, I hit hard. Neck, I hit hard. Neck, I hit hard." So uh, there's a confession to the crime, okay, neck, I hit hard, I hit her hard on the back of the neck. When they found her, she'd been de- decapitated, and uh, um, so there you go. Yeah, he, he hit he, hard all right, that's for sure. He, he hit her very hard. <laughs> My goodness. Some of the musical reversals have been shocking. Um is, uh, what about in terms of like politicians, for instance? Anything? Oh, shocking? politicians! <laughs> All right, let me go to my politics file. Oh, uh, there's got to be a big one there. That's a huge one. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, look, let me play you a real funny one on oh, Biden. I, I, I love, love that. this one. <laughs> hey. Uh, all right, where are we? Um, here we are. Here's Biden uh, stuttering and stammering his way through a speech. No indication that's the case at all with regard to, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, 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 there's a total of a... Uh, um, uh, so he's he's having trouble, obviously. And back as he says, have I lost it? Have I lost it? Have I lost it? Have I lost it? And he did lose it. No, he lost it all right. He, he lost it all right. And people, uh, oh, look, look, he, he just does not have good reversals. Here's another one on him. And I've been doing this kind of thing. My, it's not all me. I've been doing this thing my whole life. And he says, I'll be a moron. I'll be a moron. Uh, <laughs> you know, look, um, he just had shocking reversals, Biden. I, I just don't know how he how he stayed in office as long as he did. That is hilarious. And, and David, I must ask you, um, out, out there in Australia, you guys are obviously keeping up with uh, American politics, I would have to imagine. Well, I am anyway, yes. Yeah, yeah, Australia has American politics on its news, yes. And people are, are, are they that into it, though? Oh, not as much as America. Oh, of course not, <laughs> yes, I would imagine. But there is obviously some interest there. Oh, yeah. Oh, of course there is. Oh, yeah, Australians are interested in American politics. But we're, we're sort of more laid back. You know, we sort of don't take it totally seriously. America does. Oh, yes. You know? Yeah, people are getting killed for their uh, political beliefs out here. Oh, I know. It's crazy. It, so it's very it's crazy. crazy. And, you know, I, I don't exactly back or support any politician, to be honest with you. I don't identify with any political group. I'm like a Martian looking in, David, to be honest. Uh-huh. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. In other, yeah words, I, in other words, I have yeah. no biasness, you know. Right. Yeah, look, I'm pretty much the same. Like, in Australia, I voted both left and right sure. on the election. So I, I don't lean to either party. Um, uh, but it is fun to poke at, uh, you know, uh, of course. I'm sorry? I said it is fun to poke at, though. Oh, I have a lot of fun with politicians. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, here, let me find some uh, current ones. Let's have a look. Let me, what, what have I got on Kamala? Uh, oh, yes. Maybe some Kamala Harris. Okay, let's get some current Okay, here's Kamala Harris as an Atlantic rally. <laughs> That's a little low there. Is it? Oh, I can go by him. Here she says, we sell God, we sell God. Do you hear that? That, too bad? that level I write for you? It's a little low, but I can barely make that out. I can give you more. Okay, give us a little All juice. Right. All right, here's another one. For veterans and students being scammed by big for profit colleges. And here she says, give powerful fib. I can make that up. I can make that up, yes. Yeah, so she's lying. What that is. And uh, here we have a scary reversal on her. And neither were the elections that put me in those offices. We were underestimated at practically every turn, but we never gave up. 
because the future is always worth fighting for. And she says, a wolf, get out. Go see a war. In other words, get out. She's out there. She's warmongering. Go see a war. Oh, uh, interesting. Yes, it is indeed. Very interesting. And uh, David, let me just uh, throw this one at you. With all the world conflicts going on right now, do you think we oh, are going to be headed into a World War Three like scenario? Uh, yes, I do. Fully. Yeah. Be- you, you firmly believe that? I firmly believe that. i got reversals that'll tell me that. Oh, my. Uh, yeah, here's Biden warning us of Armageddon. Listen to this. One of the great gifts of the spirit of independence, to think about this, one of the great gifts is our capacity to see ourselves whole and see ourselves honestly. And she says, you're not safe, Armageddon. The wolf says, no, we can't. Well, that's scary, isn't it? It uh, sure is. Wow. Yeah, I know. Yeah, and uh, I've got some other reversals that are pretty scary about that. Let me see if I can. Uh, well, now, where oh, have I got those ones? Um, hmm. I got reversals about a war coming up. Um, I'm trying to think where I've got them filed. Um. You know what? I just cannot put my hand on them at the top uh, of my head. Um, no worries. It's okay. No. No, can't find them. Sorry. It's okay. Uh, yeah, no, I I believe we're in real trouble. Uh, yes, I do. Um, I uh, I think everyone should be prepared. I'm certainly prepared. I've got my year's supply of food. Um, I've got all my, uh, you know, I'm all ready. So. Uh, but we'll see, you know, um, what, it depends on what they do in the Middle East, doesn't it? Um, it really does. Yeah, that's what I'm that, Well, that's what I'm afraid of. You know, I don't think any politician here in America is going to stop what's going to come to fruition. In other words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, here, here's, here's a couple of reversals on, a, on some clients that will scare Come me. through and really want to finish that project with me or whether he wants to go his own way on his own project. So, and this one says there's dark wars in the air. There's dark wars in the air. There's dark wars in the air. Dark wars in the air, yes. Yeah, yeah. What do you think I that means? Me. There's dark wars in the air. There's <laughs> wars. War is brewing everywhere. I've got one that says war soon America. And I'm trying to find out where that one is. Um Oh, that's so annoying. I can't put my hand fingers on it top of my head. Oh well. Um yes, uh, okay, here's uh, here's his reversal on a client. His franchise uh, maybe tax returns as franchises and the patient on the arc and things like that. Here he says, Help me go, bomb shelter. <laughs> oh, that's not very good reversal. Oh, ooh. That's actually not a good reversal at all. Sorry about that. I thought that was better than that. It happens. Uh, here's another one. It sounds like... It sounds like... This is something we might ought to be doing and figuring out how to... Oh, what if we... Let's see. If we could... And this one says, instant, we'll feel a war. Yes, we'll feel a war. Yes, we'll feel a war. Instant, we'll feel a war. Yes, we'll feel a war. So these are some of my feelings I've got on clients. And right. the client, there is a general uneasiness in the air around. Uh, I think everyone can feel that something is coming. Um, and uh, yeah. Uh, I, I think we need to be ready for it. I think uh, you're right, I, David. Yeah I, yeah, I think it's probably going to start in the Middle East. Um, you know, we'll see. Uh, the next couple of days will be really telling. But. Oh, yes. We, we'll have to wait and see what happens next. And, of course, all kinds of controversy going on all over the world, not just with our politicians, but with our entertainers, as always. And one, Puff Daddy, comes to mind. Another man who's uh, facing uh, quite a bit of heat right now. 
Oh, yes, he is indeed. I need to do some reversals on him. You uh, really do. But one. but then again, there hasn't really been any like new audio, per se, in terms of things. No, like, you're right. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, we it, might it's, not ever hear might... him again, uh, by the way, talk publicly. He may not. He's in real trouble. He's in He's big real... trouble, yes. And uh, do, you, do you think perhaps he might get whacked? Uh, in jail? Sure. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, look he's what happened at pretty... look what happened to Epstein. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah, he's oh, talk about Epstein. Oh, yeah, let me play oh. this reverse. Oh, I can tell you what happened to Epstein. Oh my. Um, where are we? Uh, here we go. No, wrong one. Hang on. Wrong year. Prince Andrew. Where have I got Prince Andrew? Prince Andrew. Here we go. Ah, oh, Prince Andrew. Here he is on his infamous interview about uh, on BBC. Remember this, his classic interview? Oh, yes. Uh, here he is. Nobody can prove uh, whether or not it, um, that it, that photograph has been doctored, but I don't recollect that photograph ever being taken. Here he says, Jeff, Jeffrey Epstein, Jeff had to get murdered. Jeff had to get murdered. You hear that? I do. That is Prince Andrew basically admitting to putting out a hit on Jeffrey Epstein. Wow. Jeff had to get murdered. He didn't commit suicide. He was killed in his jail cell. Yeah, it's hard to believe that he uh, allegedly committed suicide, in my opinion. It's very hard to believe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. Well, look, the, the, the security cameras were down for two or three hours. No one saw what was going on, and he's suddenly dead in his cell. I don't buy suicide for a moment. I love no, that cat, was... by the way. Sorry? I said, I love your cat jumping up there, by the way. Oh, that's where I got my camera <laughs> on, don't I? <laughs> I'm trying to keep her out of the way of my keyboard. Yeah, my cat does the same thing. You know, anytime I come in here, uh, he always wants to get on my lap and meow into the microphone. It's like he knows. Yeah, I know. Yeah, well, here I'm on a radio show and he's <laughs> up on my desk. <laughs> Love that. Yeah. For those uh, those of you at home listening to this later, you will be maybe, uh, he, well, we didn't hear a cat this time. Unfortunately, we would have liked to. People love the cats here on the program, but yeah, it's a very nice, white, fluffy cat there. Yeah, I've got five of them, Matt. Actually. Oh, my. Five. Yeah. yeah, I'm a cat man. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. We do love cats here, but, you know, David, as we come to a close here pretty soon, yes, uh, obviously, you believe in uh, the after the afterlife. Um, yes. So do you believe in things like cryptids, like uh, Bigfoot? Uh, the Loch Ness Monster, that sort of thing. Oh, oh, um, um, uh, I don't know. The jury's out on Bigfoot and the Loch Ness Monster. There's some interesting uh, videos and photos out there of the Loch Ness Monster. Yeah, look, I'm, I'm fairly open-minded. You know, I, um, I'm not the Loch Ness Monster, the Bigfoot I'm talking about. Sure. There's some interesting photos out there of Bigfoot, you know. Yeah, there's some interesting cases, uh, no doubt. But the Loch Ness Monster, that one's a little bit harder for me to sort of um, firmly believe yes. in, in a way. Yeah, I have problems with the Loch Ness Monster. I believe in Bigfoot. Yeah. Yes, I do. I'm with Loch you with Ness Bigfoot. Monster. I don't know. The jury's out on that one. <laughs> right. And um, I'm sure you've been keeping up with all the news on UAPs, UFOs, that sort of deal. And by the way, I, 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 I got to be honest with you, David. I hate the term UAP. Oh, I hate it too. Who made that up? <laughs> I much prefer UFOs. Yeah, look, I've done a whole research into the UFOs. I spent a year looking at the UFOs back in uh, 2001, 2002. Um, look, a lot of genuine cases out there. There's a lot of scams and frauds, right. a lot of delusional con men. Um, but you've got the genuine cases, you know. So uh, um, I think there's something to UFOs. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you on that one. And. Uh, David, you know, I've been listening to you for years on various radio stations um, throughout the years, wherever you appeared, I've, I've listened to you and especially growing up late at night, you know, hearing you on Art Bell's program and early on, you know, I'm just a kid listening and, you know, one day you're there and then 
then you're gone. And later on, I find out that you were in a major lawsuit. Yes, I was. Yeah, it was a very unfortunate thing. I was everywhere, all over America, and I got sued, and my career was ended. So, unfortunately. Hopefully, it can revitalize itself. People need to learn all about this stuff. It's an amazing technology. Uh, it, it offers so much hope and potential, um, and it, it, it needs to, it needs far more uh, far more um, exposure than what it's getting. Uh, I agree with you on that. One. And what advice would you give someone interested in pursuing, you know, reverse speech uh, to any capacity? Oh, what advice. Be prepared to spend a lot of time. <laughs> it's a very time-consuming uh, uh, process. You know, I spend hours and hours and hours at my desk with headphones on. But it's a fascinating study. Uh, you'll find out so much about human nature, about spirituality. I mean, we haven't even touched on my insights into God and spirit. That's a whole other radio show, that, that one. Um, right. Reverse speech answers so many unanswered questions. You know, where we're all looking for truth, and reverse speech is here to give us truth. Sometimes that truth we don't like, but it's still there nonetheless. So, so yeah, be prepared to be blown away. Okay, and if you want further information, you can contact me, email me at backwards at reversespeech.com. That's B-A-C-K-W-A-R-D-S at reversespeech.com. Very nice. Once again, David, I do want to thank you for being a part of the program. It's been an honor and pleasure to have you here uh, for so long. You know, I've been wanting to talk to you forever. So I'm finally glad we've got the chance and opportunity to do so, my friend. And I will see you on the other side. That... Um, that Michael D. Con. Michael D. Con. All right, go, go. In five, three. That's tomorrow, and that is it. Again, five, four. That's tomorrow, and that is it for us today. And we will leave you with a. I, I can't do it. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live. Fuck it. Do it live. I can. I'll write it, and we'll do it live. Right. Fucking thing sucks. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. End of day. The freedom of speech is being taken away. They can't. Oh, where after they die. Uh, I, do you believe in heaven? Whatever. If you don't read the newspaper, you're uninformed. If you do read it, you're misinformed. That's a great question. What is the long term effect of too much information? One of them. Live in a society now where it hurts first. You're here. Get it out there. We don't care who it hurts. We don't care who it hurts. We don't care if it's true. Just say it, sell it. Anything you practice, you'll get good at. Including... In, was it 1997, Michael? Anil?